Hi guys, it's me, Lindsay from Equip Me OT, here today to talk about completing a shower following a total hip replacement. So there's several pieces that I want to go over today uh, to help you set up your bathroom so you're ready for that shower, how to do your transfer to make sure you're getting in and out of the tub safely, and then once you're in the shower to make sure you're using all the right precautions to keep that hip in a good position and so your recovery goes smoothly. So let's go over those now. So the first thing I wanted to go over is my bathroom has a glass shower sliding door. When it comes to recovering from a total hip replacement, glass shower doors are not a good fit. So I went ahead and removed those glass shower doors, which was fairly simple. I had to take one screw, actually two screws out, to remove the bottom and then they lifted up and off the track system. Um, they were a little heavy, so if you need a little extra help, definitely ask for a second person so you're not dropping giant glass doors. That would be bad. So we had a uh, very inexpensive tension rod as well as a very low-cost plastic shower curtain to put up in its place. So we have this nice piece here. It went in really easily. It slid actually into the existing surround on my shower, which was great. So I was able to keep that all where it was, make it really easy for taking down later and replacing those glass shower doors if those are your preferred look for your bathroom. But this setup is wonderful for what you need when you use a tub transfer bench. So I have a tub transfer bench here, already in place, already installed. If you need help with the installation or assembly of your tub transfer bench, check out my posts here and here which will give you more details on that. Uh, it's very simple. This is a pretty standard piece of equipment. This particular one is by Drive Medical. You can find them just about anywhere. I will leave a link down below as to where you can purchase them through Amazon. Uh, the other equipment that you will need for this is I would recommend having your leg lifter nearby. This guy's gonna be really important, especially if you're completing these transfers by yourself. If you have another person with you who's willing to help lift your leg in and out, you may not need this, but if you're doing it by yourself, you will need this at least for the first few times till you get your hip strength back. You will also need a handheld shower head. I love this one. Um, I have had this one in my shower for years. It comes with the handheld portion as well as a static portion that stays up, which is great if you're going to be using a shower that's used by multiple family members, so it's really versatile. I also have a long-handled sponge. This is the classic hospital grade long-handled sponge that you would get with your hip kit if you got one of those. So I'll show you the best way to use this as well as a little trick on how to uh, get it just right so it's great for getting your back and your legs while you can't bend. So we need all of those things before we get started. And I'm gonna show you now the safest way to complete the transfer into the shower. Very important that we're keeping our hip at a nice secure 90 degrees or more. So I did have the shower bench backrest in place. You could remove it altogether if you want to make sure that you have enough recline available. I shifted mine back a little bit. It has the ability to do so. There are two notches on the bottom to adjust it. So mine's in its farthest back position so I can recline enough to maintain my hip precautions. So we're gonna go ahead now and sit down on the bench. Assuming you're walking with a walker, I've got my two-wheeled variety here, kick out our leg. We're going to reach back for this portion of the tub bench with sticks outside the tub. Have a seat, okay? I've always got one hand behind me so I'm, and one hand stabilizing on the walker so I know right where I am. Now I've got my leg lifter here. We're going to fish over our toes. All right, now we're going to need to swing the walker out of the way a little bit here. We don't want it far, I'm still keeping it there. Now I'm going to keep myself very reclined throughout this position, about this transfer. This is why it's important that you have the uh, backrest back out of the way because you're gonna have to recline quite a bit. I have a super high edge on my tub, so it was really a challenge to get my leg over and keep that 90 degree. So I'm reclining quite a bit using my arm here. We're gonna slide our leg over, Ooh, keeping that 90 degrees. And then we can push with our hand and with our good leg as we slide over and get the rest of the way in here. At this point, I can go ahead and scoot to the edge of the chair a little bit if I want to to help keep my recline position. Get rid of my leg lifter. If 
but keep it nearby because you will need it again when you go to get out of the tub. All right, so I'm in position on the shower chair. This is a really nifty part. This is why the plastic shower curtain is important because this is what's going to keep your bathroom dry when you go to do this shower. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this and I wanna show you what I did right here. So maybe a little hard to see because it is clear, but I have a slit cut and it's going to slide through this gap here. That is what's going to keep my floor dry. So I'm still playing my playing it safe by keeping my leg extended. Reach underneath here a little bit. All right. So now that slit that I cut in there, which I have a, I'm going to show a couple pictures to help you see that up close. That slit in there is going to go through that gap and I can pull the rest of it all inside the tub and I'm not going to get my bathroom soaking wet. So that's good. So now that that's all in place, I can go about taking my shower. It's really important if you're fresh out of surgery and you just, you still have the uh, staples in place. So usually within the first two weeks of having your hip replaced, those, that incision is not supposed to get soaking wet. It can get a little drip on it. It can get a little bit damp but it is not intended to get soaking wet. So if you have a waterproof bandage over it, which most hospitals are sending folks home with a nice waterproof bandage, if that is in place, you're good to go. No, ne Not necessary to do anything extra at this point other than just take your shower. If you have an exposed incision, you want to make sure you cover that with something to protect it when you take your first shower. So a piece of uh, um, plastic wrap goes over that incision with a small bit of uh, paper tape to kind of seal the edge, that is going to keep that incision mostly dry. When you go to dry off at the end, make sure you don't rub the incision to dry it, pat it dry, okay? That's what most surgeons are recommending folks do when they come home. After the incision has fully healed, you can do whatever you want as far as getting it wet, but during the healing process, if there's still scabs present, they do not want you getting that incision soaking wet. So that's why having a handheld shower head is really important. It allows you to direct the water so you avoid blasting it right on that incision. This gives you so much more control. So between the handheld shower head, which I recommend getting a shower head holder, which I'll put a link down below in the description. If you have a solid surround shower, those hook with a, just a suction cup. They are marvelous to make your life easier to hold your shower head in place while you're trying to do your washing. Um, if you do not have that, you can obviously drop it down below, set it on the seat next to you. That's not a bad idea. Um, Long-handled sponge, just sprayed everybody. Long-handled sponge like this is the only way you're going to be able to wash your foot safely because you cannot bend to reach down to the floor. So this kind of piece of equipment is going to be essential so you can wash your lower legs and feet. If you wanna get your back and you wanna save your shoulders for it, this is a little bonus trick. Get this piece of plastic here, nice and hot under the warm water. And once it's warm, it becomes pliable. Give it a little bend, it seems like overkill, but that'll give you a little hook in it so that you can wash your back easily. Just a little life hack when you're dealing with these plastic handled, long handled sponges. Okay, so we're gonna pretend like we've completed our shower now. We can open our curtain all the way up. Slide it out of the way. Still with my leg extended here. I've kept it extended the entire shower. It's part of the reason why I'm sitting on the edge of the tub bench here. Getting out, we're gonna go strong leg out. Now I can reach my leg lifter, hook my toe. We're gonna stay reclined, lift that leg out, back onto the floor. Keep my leg lifter close. When you go to dry off after your shower, you can do your regular drying upper body. When you go to do your lower body, don't make the mistake of bending forward to dry your feet. You'll have to take your towel, drop it down, and kind of do a gentle drying that way, or even wait for it to kind of air dry because you cannot bend down there to get it over your feet. A reacher could be helpful, but for most folks, I find just taking the towel, dropping it down over the leg and kind of shimming it up over does the trick. So there you have it. 
If you've completed your shower after a hip replacement, you're feeling good, that was a pretty easy solution with the added shower curtain, so I recommend doing that if you do have glass doors in place. So if you have any questions or concerns, please leave me a comment down below. Consider giving me a thumbs up if you got some value out of this video. And as always, if you need more videos or information about staying independent and safe in your own home, please consider subscribing to Equip Me OT.